right, hello everybody. We are the Lidos Health Supply Chain Group, and today we're going to tell you a little bit more about our project between Lidos and the Office of Veterans Affairs. Uh, starting off with team introductions, my name is Catherine Hugh. I was the team lead for our project, and I got my undergraduate degree in business information technology with a concentration in cybersecurity law school from Virginia Tech. Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Popey. I received my undergraduate degree as well at Virginia Tech. I studied business innovation technology with a concentration in the operations supply chain management. Hi, I'm Hannah Davis. I graduated from Virginia Tech last year with a degree in business management, consulting, and analytics. And I'm Liam Moriarty. I graduated from Virginia Tech last year with a mechanical engineering degree while I was programming the data center officer training school for next year. Um, first, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors and advisors. Um, Gene Meldon, Jason McCarthy, John Perry, Mike Lamberty, and Amy Freeman were all part of the Lido suite. Uh, Professor Justin Monday, I see you back there. Thank you for all of your assistance on this project, as well as everybody who's listed below who have provided us with interviews and information along the way. Uh, diving into the project overview, the Department of Veterans Affairs is a governmental organization designed to provide services and support for our nation's veterans. This involves providing them with world-class health care, ensuring that they receive their earned benefits, and making sure that they get their final resting place. Next, Hannah will go a little bit more into the background and the future. Thank you, Catherine. So I'm now going to talk about the VA's current structure and some of the limitations that it creates. The first is a lack of enterprise visibility. They have 58 independently operated systems, which means that healthcare facility personnel are all inputting data about inventory's stock level into um, separate systems. This is a weak method for real-time data collection and inventory tracking. The second is ineffective store management. They have very limited access to large storage facilities and distribution centers, and the space that they do have access to is not being utilized efficiently. They have low demand items that are sitting on shelves in excess, while high demand items are not available. This means that there are transportation and distribution delays. Lastly, they have had four failed attempts at transforming their supply chain and enterprise system due to human flaw and lack of department cohesion. We learned this from Dr. Aaron Drew, who is the technical officer at the VA and in charge of supply chain management modernization. This leads us into our key question, which is do inherently governmental functions hinder supply chain modernization? An inherently governmental function is an activity that federal agencies or employees are required to perform when doing their public sector work. Procurement and sourcing fall within this category, which makes it extremely difficult for them to get approval to be able to outsource their supply chain management operations. Next, I'm going to pass it to Catherine to talk about our key objectives. Thank you, Hannah. Based off of our background and our key question, we came up with three primary objectives. Our first objective is to find expert commercial and federal metrics for supply chain modernization. Our second objective was to establish clear commonalities in successful supply chain management. And our third objective is to build a model for potential savings of supply chain modernization. In order to achieve our first two objectives, we interviewed nine different people across a wide variety of industries and backgrounds, and we came up with five potential use cases that had good supply chains that would be most beneficial for the VA's success. Um, and we'll be diving into our analysis. Thank you, Catherine. So here's our supply chain analysis table, kind of encapsulating all of our all of the five organizations we decided to include in our presentation. Our goal is to summarize and look at the similarities and differences we found across these different supply chains. So as you can see for the first two, Amazon and GHX, they insource their logistics and they recommend that it's best to invest internally and insource their logistics as well. A key takeaway is that they both are technology-based companies who will also realize supply chain as a core competency. Next, we have CVS and the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense. Both organizations decided it was best to outsource their logistical systems, and they recommend outsourcing was the way to go for the VA uh, if supply chain is not a core competency. Uh, another key takeaway is that both organizations aren't very technology based, and uh, they do not see supply chain as a core competency. Lastly, in our outlier Walmart, they insourced and built their supply chain internally. 
However, in hindsight, they wish that they had it and maybe outsourced at least parts of the supply chain because they realized supply chain was not something they did very well and was not a core competency due to their organization not being solely focused on technology. Now, I'll pass off to Liam to go in depth with our economic model analysis. Thank you, Aaron. For our team's final objective, we developed a model in order to forecast potential financial savings that DA would experience if it adequately modernized their supply chain. This model is based off of their 2021 budget of $42 billion. The data points for this model were acquired through our interviews, as well as supplemental surveys that were sent out to industry professionals and supply chain experts. We isolated four primary areas of improvement, demand planning, inventory optimization, enterprise visibility, and purchase power. And in order to maintain the integrity of the percentages that would be acquired without exceeding an estimated 100% savings of their budget, which we know is not going to happen, we allocated 25% of the budget to each of the four categories to base our model off of. So demand planning is to the highest financial savings as far as which category is concerned, uh, with most likely being 65%, followed closely by inventory optimization, then enterprise visibility, and finally purchase power. So in summary, the total most likely savings is $15.24 billion with just a modernized supply chain, which is significant in light of their $42 billion budget that the model is based on. So I'm going to pass it along for recommendations. Thank you, Liam. Based off of our conclusions, our team has developed two specific recommendations to help the VA transform and improve their supply chain. The first is modernization. They can do this by developing a centralized, integrated logistics system. This would create a singular cloud-based platform for them to use to input data and allow for real-time data tracking and information sharing across the agency. It would minimize their operational and inventory costs because they would have the right inventory, the right place at the right time. Lastly, to successfully modernize their supply chain, they need to collaborate with the IT department. They need stronger organizational leadership that promotes cross-divisional cohesion and is committed to integrating an effective technological solution. Secondly, our team recommends that they outsource their procurement processes. They can do this by following industry best practices from the commercial sector, as well as from the public sector from the agencies such as the DOT. They need to allocate department resources to their core functional areas. Supply chain management and logistics is not one of their core competencies. Therefore, the resources, such as financial and their labor, is not being optimized when being invested in supply chain management. Lastly, it's going to improve their workflow management by allocating or by outsourcing their processes to third-party contractors. The burden that they're facing due to the current policies that prohibit outsourcing will be alleviated and they will be able to better um, improve their workflow management. Both of these recommendations address the weaknesses within the VA and will help them better serve US veterans, their families, and help provide them with the highest quality health care. I'm going to pass it back to Catherine to wrap it up. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. Just to wrap up our presentation, kind of echoing some of the other groups that have already gone, uh, the Capstone Project really was the pinnacle of this program, really being able to learn in a realistic environment. Uh, Buffy Lidos is a huge sponsor. You know, most of us will probably come across them in our lifetime just working. So it was really a great experience. And I think on behalf of our whole team, we really thank you for the opportunity to learn about the VA and about Lidos.